OK. Uh, first of all, let me thank the organizers for kind invitation and, and also for, for the conference and also for the program. And uh, I'm going to be here around at, uh, for, for four or five extra weeks. So I'm happy to discuss uh, more. Well, today I'm going to talk about uh, something uh, well, which sort of which I hope to understand to some extent. Uh, and uh, uh, because there are so many experts here on this resurgence, and a lot of them advertise too much of what I did. But I, I, I hope to give you a some thought of a, at least one possible strategy of, of how to approach the problem in connection with what I have been thinking about recently. So uh, the question I'm going to talk, discuss is the, uh, the issue of Stokes graphs uh, in the, as in the title. I hope people can in the, in the back can see. Uh, and, uh, and the Stokes graph, so it's a com some graph, combinatorial object, uh, but defined very geometrically. And this arises in the study of the exact WKB, WKB analysis. Um, and, uh, and of course, there has been a lot of works, uh, especially the work by uh, Andre Boros. And uh, well, so, and uh, uh, well, this is about uh, originally in the context of the uh, Schrodinger equation. So it's uh, uh, some equation, and then there's some polynomial, say potential. Let me call it P for potential, and uh, y equal to zero, uh, psi equal to zero. And uh, so this is a second order differential equation. And this is a, a classic uh, uh, exact WKB analysis. And it, you can try to solve it. There is h bar here. And you can try to uh, solve it order by order, starting with perturbation theory. And one over h bar, I think there is a square root Px. And then there is a order variable order expansion, and the question is whether you can resum it to a well-defined function via Borel sum. Now, uh, the, well, what I'm going to, going to talk, well, to talk about uh, in this context refers to uh, the generalization of this, where we have an nth order differential equation. So p to n, so there is a h bar to the n, if you like. And then uh, there are some functions, so lower order terms. And n, n, n minus 1 derivative, n minus 2 derivative, et cetera. And, and then there can be functions uh, multiplying that. So for example, let me write just one term. For example, p1 and the n minus 1, uh, dx n minus 1. Uh, and then this p1 is a function. And all the way to the constant term equal to 0. So this is some differential equation. And people certainly uh, have talked about uh, this type of dif uh, differential equations and what, oh, <laughs> what happens to the resurgence uh, already in the 80s. Well, except that in my opinion, there are still a lot of things to be done about this particular case. And in fact, the Stokes graph for this case is very complicated. Uh, I'm going to give you a definition of Stokes graph momentarily, but it's, uh, it's, it's a complete, uh, con something defined very concretely. So nowadays, we have computers, we can plot it. But then it's extremely complicated, even for simple potentials. Uh, so, so. And uh, uh, so we want to find, uh, understand it better somewhat. And, uh, uh, that, that's uh, in a slightly different way uh, from the conventional approach. Now, uh, what, what's, what makes the story interesting is that this same thing is actually the same thing uh, with, with the different name. Uh, people in these days also refer to this as spectral networks. Um, so this is uh, the same graph, again a graph. Well, to be fair, this, this might contain a little bit more information, etc. but it's basically the same thing, uh, spectral network. And, and they are studied in the context of uh, four-dimensional uh, n equal two series. Uh, so BPS states uh, in for the n equal two uh, gauge series, uh, and uh, of uh, so-called cross S. Uh, cross S in, in practice means that it's associated with some Riemann surface, uh, some surface uh, plus some singularities. And the Riemann surface in this case is just that the y squared plus p x equal to zero. And if you quantize it, then it becomes this. So uh, this is a phase space, and there is a one form, Liouville form, like uh, y dx, which plays the role of the cyber witness differential in this context. Now, uh, so the Stokes graph and the spectral networks are essentially the same object. Uh, but now, in this particular, in this context, there is a motivation to go to this high order differential equation. Uh, partly because, so let's call this, let me call this a1 case, and this can call this a n case. And in the a n case, uh, that's the case uh, where the cross theory of a n. And that's the case comes from the uh, come from the wrapping n m five brains on on this Riemann surface, which is known to consider to be non-Lagrangian for this theory, for example. So studying the BPS states of these things uh, has an extra motivation. And indeed, uh, this is a Riemann surface uh, plus a lot of singularities. 
And a lot, there are various different types of singularities, and then see uh, what we are going to obtain uh, as far as the BPS states are concerned. Singularities. And, and there are various different types of singularities. Uh, well, people in this uh, cross this literature call, uh, refers to, first of all, oh, well, they, they so-called regular punctures. And their puncture calls a maximal and non-maximal, uh, whose, whose meaning I'm going to hopefully explain. And, and it turns out that for the maximum puncture, there's a, uh, at least to some extent, go the Phelps story. But for the non-maximal punctures, uh, there is a very little known result. And uh, the punctures in this context refers to the fact that some of these functions, there are some polynomial, like a function, not necessarily polynomial, some functions in these coefficients, and they might have poles and uh, various interesting poles. So that's the type of the questions we are interested in, either in this context or that context. Although well, the, the type of the question people ask are not exactly the same, uh, but you might expect that uh, if, you, if, you, if you learn something from here, then you can transfer it to there or the other way around. And the connection is certainly known, but uh, uh, especially in the more general puncture singularities, uh, it's never been worked out. Now, uh, well, as I said, if you try to plot the spectral network or Stokes graph, it's extremely complicated. And uh, well, before I starting start working on this, I saw that well, okay, it's a simple graph, so it's a defined, well-defined thing. So why don't you just plot it and try to read it off? But even the cases where I think I know it, the theory is very simple, the Stokes graph is actually extremely complicated, and I didn't know how to proceed. It's, it was certainly beyond my comprehension to, to some extent. Well, locally there are some structures, but the global structure of the graph is highly complicated. And if I have time, I can show you some examples uh, in the from the uh, in the slides. And uh, well, but uh, it happens that there is a little bit different way of looking at this side of the problem, and and that uses the approach of the so-called quivers. And I have been interested in this approach ever since. Uh, uh, in fact, I have a PhD thesis about uh, doing the uh, beep, counting BPS states on quivers, for example. So quiver is just an oriented graph, a single graph. Whereas the spectral network, it's, it's a graph depending on some parameter theta, which I'm going to introduce later. So it's a one parameter family of graphs. And it's very complicated, but the quiver is much simpler, even for the very complicated ones. And uh, in what people say in n equal to BPS states, this, well, the, the people studying this say is that uh, in many cases, you can just draw a very simple quiver, and then it contains a lot of information. In fact, if you can recover almost everything about, uh, about this BPS state, uh, just starting with that. Do not necessarily have to start with all this. Well, except that uh, that story has been well worked out uh, but for the A1 case, but not necessarily for, uh, for more general AN cases. So what I have been listening to doing, though, though that's the uh, concerns the title BPS graph. Uh, uh, that's in a collaboration uh, with, uh, with my excellent collaborators, uh, Maximilian Gavera and uh, uh, Pietro Longhi and Chan Yung Park. Uh, so we introduced the concept of BPS graph and to, to give a bridge between spectral network and the BPS quivers. Oh, well, I should say that the subset of these people are on the job market this year. <laughs> um, well, and then, uh, so once you have this quiver, then you, you have a hope that you can try to uh, discuss this Stokes graph in terms of this quiver. So that's the strategy. And whether this works or not, I don't really know. But I should add that for A1 case, a lot of things are well understood. And indeed, this does work for the A1. And uh, that's more or less implicit in the concept of solver and also the, the spectral network. This is discussed by GMN. Uh, but uh, mo most, uh, many of the details are spelled out in the paper by Iwaki and Akanishi. <coughs> uh, so quivers, and also there's the algebra for the cross algebra associated with it. And that describes very well with what happens with the WKB analysis. So uh, in the rest of the time, I'm going to, uh, well, ho hopefully, let's see. So that is, the, uh, that is the type of the things we want to discuss. And maybe if you're an expert, you might already have an idea of what I, what I, I mean to say. Well, 
if it's not clear, I'm going to give a little bit more explanation. Well, I hope people can see. Uh, if you can't see, please let me know. <coughs> so let's see. So let's discuss the quiver in the simple possible case, simplest possible case. It's always uh, best to start with the simplest possible case. And, and let, let's do this case, A1 case first. So it's an old-fashioned uh, Schrodinger uh, equation. Uh, but say uh, the Px, the potential, is a polynomial <coughs> in x. And let's say the Px is cubic, cubic polynomial. And, and then what is the Stokes graph? Well, the Stokes graph uh, has, is defined by vertices and edges. And vertices are the zeros of this polynomial. Uh, so there, in this case, if it's cubic, there are three zeros. And that's the point where this curve uh, sort of degenerates. So you can think of this as a double fold cover, so y squared, so you can solve for y. And there is a plus minus uh, square root. And there is a two branches. So it's a double cover. This curve is a double cover of the, in this case, plane uh, parameterized by this x. So it's a double cover. But when px equal to 0, the two uh, covers collide. So it's a branch point. So the branch points are the vertices, which in this case, there are three. And then from each branch point, uh, you're going to draw a line uh, defined by the equation that imaginary part of this px dx uh, stays constant, and in, well, in this case, 0, for example, along the path starting with one of these branch points. And, uh, and then that's a local analysis. And you can com convince yourself that there are three, uh, three lines emanating. And draw a picture. And it, if, you draw, if you plot it, it looks like uh, something like this, for example. And, uh, and it might be something like this, for example. Well, why, does this, why is people in exact WKB analysis interested in this? Because it, def it defines a region where uh, the borel so, well, uh, this borel sum of this function uh, is uh, smooth. So, uh, well, so that, that's a inter very uh, interesting result, which I think is hard to prove completely rigorously. Uh, but the statement is that uh, this function, after borel summation, has a smooth function inside this, each of these regions surrounded by this thing. And each of these regions is called the Stokes region. And this graph curve is called the Stokes graph. And, and, and of course, the, the meaning of the line is that when, when it crosses this line, something might happen. So the, the, the functions defined by the Borel summation might jump. And uh, the so-called WKB connection formula tells you how, how the jump happens. Well, in this case, there are two solutions. Well, I said that there, I took a, a, a one branch, but there are two branches here, plus minus. So there are actually two solutions. And when you cross the lines, one of the solutions uh, becomes the linear combination of the other two, etc. So that's the, uh, that's the reason. And for that reason, people are interested in, in this, uh, uh, in this Stokes graph. And also, well, so when you do define the Borel summa summation, well, uh, you first define, well, we, we had, well, uh, you, you need to integrate in the Borel plane. Uh, and, but you can also, well, typically you can try to do that on the real axis. Uh, but you can also uh, integrate in the direction loaded by angle theta. So it's a directional Borel transform, I think it's called. And if you do that, uh, there is going to be a factor, exponential minus i theta, where theta corresponds to that parameter. So theta runs from 0 to 2 pi. So if you want to understand the whole structure in the complex plane, you, you've got to vary this parameter theta from 0 to 2 pi, uh, and then scan these parameters. And what happens is that if you rotate this parameter theta, this thing, so these three lines here, begins to rotate here and there, for example. And it begins to rotate. Uh, and then there are three lines, but these three lines rotate is somewhat, uh, well, not, not completely independently because there is only one parameter. So something interesting happens once e each of these things rotate. In particular, uh, the Stokes graph can jump. Uh, there is a discontinuity in the topology of the Stokes graph sometimes. Well, when, well, when uh, one of these uh, uh, lines, the edges of the Stokes graph, uh, it grows, and then it might hit another, uh, another uh, branch point. So that's that's the very special case, and it, so that that happens at some special value, theta equals theta c, and before and after, uh, the the structure is different, very different. So it's either this, or for example, this, something like this, locally. 
So this is before and after if you try to change the parameter theta uh, gradually. But something very special happens here. And there is this line. Uh, so this is the, and this line is called a Stokes segment, or people in n equal 2 theory call it a K wall. And, uh, and people in n equal 2 theories are interested because they are supposed to represent the BPS states. Uh, well, uh, the reason is that, so this is a branch point. So starting from this branch point, uh, well, if you try to go to the, the direction of the cover, there are two, two lines. Uh, it's, a, it's, going to, it's a double fold cover. So there is two lines emanating from that. And then it ends from here. So if you go to the double cover, there is a, uh, there is a, a sort of a cycle. Uh, and uh, well, in fact, uh, if you, th that's, that's supposed to be a picture if you go to the cover. But I might actually write it more, more like this or something like that. But anyway, there is a, if you go to the cover, uh, so that's, uh, well, okay, maybe, maybe I said that's the previous one, okay. But uh, you can throw to, uh, th there is a circle. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, I forgot to say that there is actually a branch point in this uh, uh, branch, uh, branch cut uh, emanating this branch point. So which defines a general Riemann surface, and this is a cycle going around. Uh, so it starts on one seat and then goes back to the, uh, another seat. Now, uh, what is the quiver in this case? Well, in the quiver in this case is actually extremely simple. That's why, why I chose this example. So if once you begin to rotate, etc., uh, there's going to be one, uh, one of these stock segments here. Uh, so let me call it gamma 1, for example. And then another, there's going to be another stock segment. Actually, that depends on some parameters, uh, depending on the coefficients, etc. But in some cases, they're on uh, these two things gamma and gamma 2. So there's going to be stock segment once you begin to rotate. The point is that, well, these, these two things, in general, uh, if you consider generic parameter, will not appear simultaneously for different values of theta. So once you, you, as you change the parameter theta, this happens at certain values, and this happens at certain values of theta, but not simultaneously. But nevertheless, there are two such things. And you can count the intersection number uh, of the cycle surrounding this, and, uh, and the which gives 1 or minus 1, depending on the convention. So the quiver in this case is simply that, this gamma 1, and oh, maybe uh, this color is difficult to see from behind. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's use this color, which is probably easier to see, uh, gamma 1 and gamma 2. And there's a single arrow in between. So, uh, so this is the A1 quiver. And this A1 quiver is the quiver uh, for this uh, cubic uh, polynomial with the second order differential equation. Well, so this is a dramatic simplification from the picture uh, I'm, I'm liking. Uh, it's just a, a very simple graph, only two nodes and one edge. Well, of course, this, in this case, it's not that complicated, but uh, it's a much simpler graph. And, and the point is that uh, people realize that this one actually knows quite a little bit about the original problem. Well, what does it know? Well. At least it, tell, it, it knows about the following. Uh, it knows about the uh, uh, monodromy of these functions. So what, what is the meaning of this? So OK, so let's define phi, uh, psi a plus minus. So uh, psi plus minus, these are the formal solutions. And you can try to borrow some. So they are, as I said, they are plus minus. They are two solutions. Now, uh, so this is de defined by integral over some path. So you can take a fixed sum point. And then uh, at, at value x, you can define it as an integral from some reference point, say x0 to x, along some path. And for that, you need to specify a certain path. And, and then, uh, well, uh, that, that, that defines a function, uh, defined at the point x. But then the interesting thing is that, is that something interesting might happen if that x moves around the branch points. So if x goes around, and then and it goes around this. There are many possible choices. And then, in general, the function will not come back to itself. And uh, there is a difference. And uh, so, but that difference uh, can be expressed in terms of, uh, of the so-called Borough symbols, uh, which takes the form of, uh, well, there is a factor 2, et cetera. But then px dx along the path gamma i. So let's call it uh, b for boros, I guess. Uh, um, and uh, uh, well, so this is the, 
so this gamma i is the path gamma i. So these are, this is a uh, closed integral. So whatever difference there is, that does related to the choice of the ambiguity of the path, well, the monotony of the path, and whatever difference comes from the uh, uh, closed path surrounding these things. In fact, uh, essentially the, same, this exp the, the fact that was explained in the old paper of Boros, uh, I think. Now, uh, so this gamma i, so these uh, gamma i's are, so this, this thing is present for each vertex of the quiver. And, uh, and then there is this uh, transformation for, well, well, so this is for a specific choice of the parameter, but once you have this uh, crossing, et cetera, happens, uh, this monodromy, this borrow symbol will jump. And then that's the formula due to uh, Derivare uh, Dillinger farm. And uh, jump, uh, suppose that there is a, a, particular, a particular gamma. So let's call it a gamma, say, gamma k. Uh, becomes the, the segment, stock segment. And then discuss what happens to gamma i, uh, so for the general i. Right, so this is the index i. And then the formula says that this thing, so, uh, well, okay, so you have to borrow some, and you have to borrow some, and then before and after. So let's call it plus and minus. And uh, before and after, so they are related by the following transformation, uh, borrow transformation, and then one plus uh, gamma k, uh, k. Uh, okay, so maybe before and after. So this, okay, this is supposed to be plus and minus. Well, may maybe I'm going to use the notation that b minus to make that's probably easier to understand. So this is the borrow transformation before and after. And then there is a power uh, which goes uh, like the, the inner product between this gamma i, gamma k. So this is uh, due to the rubber in Japan, although many, many of the ingredients are already in the Boros papers to the extent I can understand. Um, so this is a, a interesting, very interesting formula. And, uh, oh, let's see, could I, I hope I could, uh, oh, yeah. Now, uh, what's interesting, well, okay, so what's interesting is that this formula, exactly the same formula, uh, was something people in Quiver, Quiver and then the so-called cluster algebra, algebra associates was interested in. So namely, for completely different reason, people say that there is something called a Q, a uh, Quiver. Okay, what is a Quiver? It's just defined by anti-symmetric matrix. So let's call this, a, well, in this case, QIJ is defined from this intersection matrix, but uh, people uh, are interested in more general anti-symmetric matrix. And then for each vertex, so maybe for each entry here, you associate some variable here such that transformation property are exactly this. Uh, so this is the cluster algebra. Uh, in, more technically, it's uh, some of the uh, 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 automorphism associated with the uh, cluster, cluster mutation of the cluster Y variable. But, uh, but the same formula appears already in the, uh, in the quiver. So that means that, uh, uh, well, uh, in this case, well, okay, so that, that was a complicated graph, but at least as far as this thing, so namely the important uh, jump uh, of this Boro symbol or monodromy data is concerned, as far as that is concerned, uh, things are encoded nicely in the abstract formalism of quiver and then the set of variables associated with that. Um, so that was the A1 case. Um, uh, let's see. <coughs> now, uh, now you have to discuss uh, what happens to the AN cases. And, and the question is that can we extract the quiver first of all? And uh, in some cases, luckily there is a known quiver, so you can just use the literature. Uh, well, no, people, people know, well, the side comment is that these quivers are uh, are de derived because people are interested in the modular space of flat connection which appears in this 4D equal 2 series language. But in general, not. So what is the setup of the AN case? Well, AN, in the AN case, I have the, the curve. So let me call the curve. Well, okay, so I, I'm going to have the curve. And uh, in this, uh, the curve is going to be given by this thing, so it's a n by n minus 
phi x equal to zero. So this is the spectral curve of the Hitchin module, if you like. But uh, anyway, so this, then this phi takes values and say SLN, for example. SLN matrix. And, uh, and then this, this defines a cover, n fold cover, of surface C, uh, whose co local code is given by x. And, and this has, in general, many singularities, allows for singularities. And whenever you have singularities, it allows for uh, the singularities for this field phi. And well, since, since this is SN valued, well, the, the sing locally, the singularity structure takes the form of the matrix, n by n matrix. And at the singular point, x equals to x0, for example, then they can be residue. Well, you can go to high order poles. That's called the irregular singularity. But let's consider the sim simpler case where there's a regular singularity, so-called. So there is just a single order pole. But even in that case, there is a n by n matrix. And you have to specify the singularity type. And, uh, and, and also, well, this is supposed the conjugation doesn't matter because uh, by element of SUN doesn't matter because this is defined by the uh, determinant equation. So the condition is that this matrix uh, uh, conjugates to a certain element. And the, that certain element uh, can be taken to be the jordan Broch form. And uh, when all the eigenvalues are different, that's called a 1, 1, 1, 1 uh, puncture. Uh, so that's, that, that's the maximal puncture. So this one means the size of this uh, Joe Dunbrock. So everything is, uh, all the eigenvalues are different. In that case, it's called a, uh, it's called a maximal puncture. It's a generic case. But there are other cases where uh, you have a more complicated Joe Dunbrock. And in, well, you might think that uh, the more complicated Jordan box might be the limit of this thing. But because of this conjugation, uh, you have to be a little bit careful. And it's not simply the limit. In fact. So in this setup, what happens is that say C can be a sphere. And then there can be multiple uh, singularities, which are specified uh, by these types. And then ask the question of uh, uh, what kind of, uh, 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 well, first of all, then, then you can ask the question of what kind of phi is allowed. And once phi is allowed, it might have several different parameters. But anyway, it, it, once phi is allowed, you can expand this. And it's a determinant, so it gives like the, the nth order equation for y. And that's the counterpart of the uh, AN, AN case, or nth order differential equation version of the WKB. And well, let's see, what, how, why is the spectral network in this case complicated? Well, well, partly because there are many branch points, et cetera. But one of the reasons is that uh, if you have the two lines cross, well, first of all, when you discuss the lines, et cetera, well, this is n fold cover. So if you solve this, so this is the n fold equation. So it has n solutions. So y1 to yn, if you solve this for y. And when the when it branch cut uh, at the branch point, uh, branch I branch cut and J branch cut might coincide. And for each pair of I and J. Uh, previously, there are only two two branch cuts, so only Y1 and Y2 collide anyway. But uh, in this case, there are more general branch cuts, uh, branch points, and then in the general branch point, might be should be labeled by two set of integers I J, for example, two three or three four, etc. And, uh, and not only that, but uh, uh, the, the complication in this case, which is essentially already known in the uh, apparent in the paper 82 uh, on exact WKB long ago, is that uh, there might be new lines emanating. Uh, when the two the stop sign cross, there should be new lines emanating. And when, when then, then this new line might cross another stop sign, and then you have to have another new line, etc. So that makes things definitely more and more complicated. The graph uh, becomes more complicated. However, uh, so, um, and, and then the, and here comes the main point, uh, which is that, uh, well, if the graph is complicated, you have to do something to simplify. Well, the graph is complicated because, partly because it is a one parameter family of a graph. I said that there is a theta correspond to the direction of the directional transform. And you have to plot some complicated figure for each power is value of theta. 
But now uh, I can, uh, the, the proposal is to uh, simplify the question. So forget about uh, solving this, the problem in general, but fine tune the coefficient. For, so even if you, imp after imposing the condition, there are some parameters remaining on this file. But let's fine tune the coefficient such that all the stock segments appear for a single body of theta. And, uh, and then, uh, thank you, yes. Right, so then uh, what happens is that, uh, well, all the non-trivial information which you want to regard in this quiver will be in a single graph. And, and then it's much easier to extract the quiver and, uh, and that's, uh, that's what, uh, what we want. Yeah, okay, so let me try to start showing the, flushing the pictures because it's probably much easier to say, uh, show rather than saying in words. Uh, right, so here it is. It's, uh, so let's see. So this is an example. Okay, I should enlarge it. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, I need uh, need smaller. And then. Oh, okay. I should enlarge it. But, okay. So this is the example of the uh, BPS graph. Oh, uh, sorry. The the Stokes graph. Uh, in the example. Uh, let's see. I need to enlarge it. I forgot how to enlarge it. Uh, yeah, anyway, in fact, the, the picture will become larger. And uh, so, so it's a complicated thing. And then, the, so there are, uh, yeah, indeed, it's a little bit too small. Yeah, so let's see. Then, then let's, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so full screen doesn't help. Uh, okay, show data points. I forgot how to enlarge it. Uh, okay, well, may maybe I can see that uh, score this here, for example. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a little bit too small, but uh, uh, yeah, let's see. So this is the graph, and it's uh, everything is a little bit condensed. Uh, oh, okay, maybe there is a way to enlarge it. Pan, no, I forgot. Zoom, box zoom. Yeah. Okay, I don't know why this is not. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I went to somewhere. Yeah. So okay. So there's a program for uh, plotting these uh, graphs, and uh, for some, well, due to my collaborators Chan Yun Park and Maximo Gabera, there is also a mathematical file written by Andy Netsky. And see, so if you if you begin to do this, uh, well, what happens is that so the, I'm varying the parameter theta, and this graph uh, changes considerably. Uh, there are various lines, and then the, the points, well, there are some small points here in this case. In this case, they represent the punctures, and there are many branch points here. In this example, there are six branch points. But now, uh, uh, if you, I, I have actually fine-tuned the parameters such that uh, the, the all, all the, BP, the graphs, so, they are all, so the, all the stock segments which appear here appears in this particular phase, uh, the single phase. And uh, yeah, that's right. So okay, so I don't know how to uh, make it larger. I forgot. Uh, and uh, and in, so this is an e so this picture uh, uh, is an example of the BPS graph. And uh, and since all the all the so well, it's, it's a, you you, sh you should try to plot it. For example, for generic parameters, it's very everything is messy. In fact, uh, you don't have to see it. In fact, the whole point is to just show that how complicated it is. But uh, 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 in fact, uh, <laughs> but uh, the point is that uh, it's hard to. In this, in this case, there is no closed segment, starting from one, one branch point to another. But uh, but in this case, the parameters are fine-tuned such that everything appears uh, in this uh, in the single parameter. And then you have a, you can easily read up because the picture is uh, takes a symmetric form. And then, then there is a set of arcs, the stock segments here and there. And then you can compute the intersection pairing and then extract the quiver associated with it. So, uh, so that gives uh, uh, the quiver. And, and then the question is that whether you can, uh, uh, whether you can uh, connect it back 
uh, to the WKB analysis. And to some extent, uh, it's always, if you, if you anticipate the connection uh, of this quiver to WKB analysis itself, then uh, you already know what kind of parameters, so namely Boros type symbols, you should associate it to each vertex of the quiver, so namely for each stock segment, and then how it transforms. There's already a canonical formula, and that will give you the proposed formula. But the question is to uh, check the directory in the exact WKB analysis side. And for that, uh, I need uh, probably uh, to know better what is known uh, about exact WKB for SLN and, uh, 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 and, and so on. And perhaps I should uh, finally flush a little bit, uh, well, maybe just this picture. So, and, uh, so one of the things I said is that uh, is people didn't know actually uh, what happens uh, when you have these uh, non maxima functions. Yes. And, uh, and then that has some nice combinatorial rule that the function degenerates, but then the graph degenerates, et cetera. So many of the things, you, got, you can just draw the graph, and then there's some combinatorial operations. And that uh, is, in this language, how to deal with how to discuss more general punctures. And, and the change of stock graph, you can also represent combinatorially. So there's definitely a combinatorial structure in this uh, exact WKB analysis for uh, n solder differential equation. And, and I'm happy to learn more about this stuff, and then hopefully there is, again, a connection to these uh, quivers. Let me finish here. Okay, please. Yes. Um, so uh, what, is the connection between, what is the connection between the normal physics use of the term quiver, as in quiver gauge theory, and your anti-symmetric matrices? What, well, how do you let's map? See. Yeah, let's see. The quiver in this context, first of all, refers to the, oh, just the oriented graph. So it has a set of vertices and then the arrows in between. So, and, uh, and the anti-symmetric matrix is the adjacent symmetric. So, so namely, the I, IJ entry of the matrix is the number of uh, uh, arrows from I to J minus the number of arrows from J to I, for example. So if, if there is no closed loop, it's, it's, it's the, the anti-symmetric matrix is, it contains the same information as the quiver itself. And uh, so, uh, but of course, quiver has appeared in various different contexts. For example, uh, quiver can be used to define quiver gauge theory. And, and then there is some, so this type, exactly the same type of graph you can try to embed into string theory, et cetera. And I had a paper uh, with uh, Dan C and then Jonathan Heckman and Cameron Buffer where we defined for the n equal one theory, for example, and then discussed the thing, for example. And, uh, and so that was a slightly different context from for the BPS states and for the n equal one, n equal two series. But the number of supersymmetries, et cetera, is the same. So it's all for the n equal one and four supercharges. And it's just a matter of whether you want to count the particles, half BPS particles inside for the n equal two, or want to construct a 4D n equal 1 theory, filling every, all the four-dimensional space-time, for example. So uh, this, yeah, the picture and then the, uh, the stocks, the lines, etc., does have meaning in several different contexts. And in fact, I also have uh, worked on some of another thing which is related is that uh, I, I formulate this in the context BPS states in 4D n equal 2 series, uh, but, uh, and then, but the, the exactly how this graph changes is also related with the, uh, the 3D n equal 2 series, which lies on the boundaries of 4D n equal 2 series, in fact, uh, which through the M5 brain is connected with, to this uh, uh, complex Chan Simon theory in the 3 manifold, so called 3D, 3D correspondence, etc. So uh, I'm now working on some follow up of where we try to uh, apply some of the quivers we found and then try to uh, extract some interesting 3 manifold invariants, for example. So the context, there are many contexts. Okay, sorry, maybe the answer is too long. Um, <coughs> So what happens if the if the if the curves that you have cubic curves have like nodal singularities? What, uh, what nodal does this singularities? Oh, the cubic curve. I see. Yeah. Uh, so the nodal singularity is the with the what's what? Y squared equals to uh, something that has a bifurcation. I mean, let's say z minus, you know, to the power two. Ah, uh, z to the power. Z minus one. Uh, z minus one. Oh, one over z. Uh, yeah. Yeah, y squared one over z, for example. Oh, that's right. So that, that's, uh, that's like a singularity, right? So singularity of this polynomial, potential polynomial. And, uh, and, and that, that actually is the point here, uh, here, et cetera. So namely, there is a zero as in the, and the, so these are the zeros, branch points, but there are poles of the potential. So that's, that's the, uh, that's the uh, and uh, that's, that's what I was calling the singularity, for example. And, uh, and near the singularity, certainly interesting things happen. Sometimes there is a stock line and it begins to oscillate, for example, and it might be absorbed into that oscillate line, for example. Uh, that, that's the local structure there. 
And in some cases, if you vary the parameter, there is sometimes a concentric circles appearing near that line. And, uh, and that's associated with the ve vector multiplet for the n equal 2 gauge series. What I think was that when your roots are degenerate, like okay. you have a, you know, cubic, say. Ah, okay, I, sorry. I mean, that's Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, actually, well, okay, good, good. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, so one minus y squared, x minus one squared times yeah. uh, something or something. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, I, I don't know the general structure. In fact, uh, we can certainly uh, play with around these examples, but uh, that's, that's like a general question of what happens with the, uh, when the two poles uh, collide, indeed. And, well, well, let's see, but the preliminary comment is that suppose that each pole has an order, uh, one of a, one, yeah, as a single order pole, for example. Then what happens is that if these two singularities collide, it becomes the pole of order two. And that type of thing has been studied in also in this gauge theory context, et cetera, et cetera. And that's the situation where in that language, a regular singularity collides to become irregular singularity. And, and the structure of analysis of the, uh, the, with the irregular singularity has been done for some cases, but not in detail. And in fact, in fact, even in the polynomial case, like the nth order polynomial case, there is that irregular singularity at infinity. So there is a px dx, but if you go to infinity, there is a, if you have an nth n order polynomial, there is a n plus one order pole at infinity. So that's known as an irregular singularity, and that has been studied to some extent. Yes. I think there was a question there. So how much is known about, um, I guess, the WKB of the differential equation? So now you have n WKB solutions, and I guess when you're crossing Stokes lines, you have some matrix which mixes right. those n. Right, right. Do you know to what extent that's been studied? Well, that's results? actually what, what I wish to know, in fact. I mean, for example, I'm sure that there is a local analysis. For example, one of the things, uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, local analysis that we should be able to do. Uh, so normally local analysis means that in the A1 case, there is just a branch point and three line emanating. And then, then basically what you can do is to approximate everything by area function and then try to, that's a concrete function, so you can try to see what happens by taking advantage of that explicitation. That's what you can do. And what I could imagine is that there is a similar thing you can do uh, if you have an n-fold cover. Yeah, and if you have an n-fold cover and then consider this maximal puncture, there is a n, n minus one divided by two, uh, many, many branch points. But still, as far as the local analysis is concerned, probably there is, you can map it to some canonical differential equation and uh, solve it with, with that and, and extract a connection formula, for example. So that's the local analysis. And once you have the local analysis, there is a question about this borrow, uh, yes, the transformation of the borrow, sorry, borrow symbols, et cetera, uh, which, uh, which is much more difficult. But, uh, but, but I don't, uh, so simply, simply put, I don't really know. So if there is something known and... Uh, To me, this uh, coincidence of uh, uh, two very different theories is uh, intriguing. Is there some reason why the same uh, type of uh, um, formalism uh, appears in those, those two very disjoint Oh, I see. Cases? Well, yeah, I don't really know the deep reason, but uh, both are related with the quantization of a certain curve. So namely, in this case, well, in the, in both, in, in the, in both cases, you have the y squared plus px equal to zero. So that's a well-defined curve and then the phase, in the phase space. And they want to quantize it one way or another. And, uh, and then to some extent, gauge theory does a way of the quantizing this and then solving the Schrodinger equation is another. And, uh, and so it's, well, maybe that, that might be the reason. Well, except that uh, I should say that uh, uh, what, what's interesting, the, the interesting generalization, which is not known even for the case of A1, is that there's something called a quantum trust, cluster transfer, cluster, quantum cluster algebra. And that, that's like a putting the variable x to everything. So the borrow single becomes non-commutative variables, and there's a power q popping up here and there. And uh, what happens is that if you have a branch point going around, you have to associate factor minus q to that instead of minus one, et cetera. So there is this one parameter q, for example. And then there is a natural question of could there be a q of the WKV? By the way, for the singular uh, aspect, I think you should discuss with uh, Koike. Oh, OK, I see, I see. He worked a lot on uh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Thank you. OK, I think we are just on time. It's half, I mean. Uh, 15.30, okay. tea is waiting for us, and we have a break, 30 minutes. Thank you.